Goodbye, little house. Whoa, trip! Whoa, trip! Whoa, trip! Well, in this video, we're on our way to the permaculture design course we've been planning for for months in Montana at Wheaton Labs. Hello, everybody. We're going on a road trip. On a road trip with three children. Everything that you would expect to happen on a road trip with three children happened. Goodbye, little house. Road trip, road trip, road trip, road trip. Road trip. We had so much excitement as we were getting in the car, which pretty quickly transitioned into boredom. Road trip, road trip, road trip. Are we there yet? We entertained ourselves pretty well though, had some good road snacks, and stopped at one of our favorite eating establishments in Idaho, which is in Twin Falls. It's a diner called Idaho Joe's. Nothing special about it, but once you're used to a place, it's nice to go back. We had some delicious diner food at Idaho Joe's. And the sausage. All right. So we already have extra napkins. We got ketchup, syrup. We have everything we need. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Enjoy your breakfast. Thank you. We took two days to make the drive. Although we intended to make it in one, we ended up staying overnight and we're so tired from the week we've had. There's hardly any footage of that stop. Mostly we just crashed. Tubby's maiden voyage has gone pretty well. Uh, we didn't get out on time, but once we were on the road, uh, it went okay. The trailer pulled fine. The truck hardly noticed that it was behind us. Um, and uh, it really didn't slow us down to have a trailer. Uh, once we got here, we had some options as to where to park it. We had to figure out uh, where we wanted it to be, how close to the action, uh, how close to other campers, and uh, kind of what the walk in the morning was going to be. Uh, but we opted to stay pretty close to the center of operation. Um, they have really sandy soil here, so I had an out of level spot, but it was easy enough to even just dig sand out from under a tire to get it to drop and be level. We're taking the opposite of a staycation here. We're traveling and we're having education. We've been talking about this for quite some time. It's time for us to do some work on our property, our homestead that's more cohesive, more holistic, really putting systems together that will help us to supply our own food and to be self-sufficient and food self-sufficient. So we are going to two weeks of training uh, Nick is going to be learning how to design using the, the principles of permaculture. So this is a an educational travel time, but we're also camping out in our travel trailer named Tubby, which Nick has equipped with solar panels and batteries. So it's our own energy independent home to travel in. And I'm so excited about that. So we use propane at home um, for cooking. And that's one of the things we're using it for here. Got a little propane stove in there, just like home. And uh, it also has a propane refrigerator and a little heater. So um, all of those things seem really useful. We're not used to having a refrigerator actually, <laughs> but uh, not wanting to leave here and get ice. And it being pretty warm, uh, the refrigerator is really gonna come in handy. In some ways, this pop-up camper is actually nicer than our house. <laughs> <laughs> than what we moved into when we moved into the yurt. It it's, is less permanent. It's, it's than the better yurt. set up than the yurt was when we moved in. For sure. Do you do you wish we'd slept in something like this instead of the yurt? Absolutely not. No, it's tight. It's it's tight, yeah. It's nice though. It's good for camping. Yeah. The solar panels went on just about like I thought they would. I just used ratchet straps from the truck to hold them to the roof of the camper. The rest of the the power system went back together just the way I had remembered it. Things charged up pretty fast. Uh, even late in the day, we were pulling almost seven amps. Um, and I might make some changes if that doesn't keep us topped off. So this is the little battery box that we had in the yurt. It's been powering our internet and yurt power all this time. And uh, it's just two deep cycle batteries, which you can hear by my heavy breathing. We just moved out here. <laughs> it's heavy, but it certainly does the job. A little charge controller. We'll disconnect for, from the panels 
and I just disconnect from the panels in order to um, use a, uh, a 10 amp uh, auto charger if the sun is not doing its job. And then for this, we went ahead and mounted the inverter right to the side of it, outside of the box, and I vented the box. Um, and that's everything. So uh, we just hook up the 12 volt leads right off of the camper to it. And if we need outlets in there, we just run them to the inverter. So the, the two cables off of the panels come right off the roof and there's this convenient little uh, sock that is supposed to cover up the metal pole. And I'm using it to guide my cable all the way down to the battery box. And I just have a bunch of extra cable, uh, 25 feet. So I could put the panels kind of anywhere. Um, and so I just coiled it up right on the tongue of the trailer. And how are our solar panels? Well, let's today? take a look. It's a little cloudy right now. Oh yeah. So when it wasn't so cloudy, we were getting about six and a half amps. Um, now we're just getting one with those clouds. It won't be cloudy all the time. Um, if we're not charging the way that we need to, then I think I'll angle the panels up a little bit. Right now they're just flat on the roof, but I bet we're gonna stay topped off just fine. And how do we tell if we're topped off? Uh, well, this, this, the charge controller will tell us uh, at what's coming from the panels or we can switch it over and we can see what the condition of the batteries are right now we're at 12.7 um, and climbing a little bit so doing pretty good there it's a 12 volt system so if it's anywhere above 12 that's okay you don't ever want to drain a 12 volt battery under 11 or it damages the battery so when using the inverter it has an automatic shutoff it won't let you go past 11. Um, uh, in this case, we haven't really used it with a direct draw off of the battery, so we'll just have to keep an eye on it. It's pretty great to be, you know, energy independent when you're out and about. I will probably never use the phrase 100% uh, self-sufficient, but uh, we have everything we need. You all may not know about me that I was raised on the road. You know, you see these people having their, their RV channels or their road channels, and I was one of those kids to a certain extent because my mother traveled to promote her book. I do feel the call of the open road now and then, and it's wonderful to be able to get out, especially with our own solar panels and batteries so that we can really just set down wherever we can, put our, put our wheels down wherever we can, and already be home. While Nick was setting up the trailer, I got to get out and meet some people. I found my way into the kitchen and I found my way to a project where Stella and I started helping to make some pillows stuffed with natural materials to make chairs more comfortable for the PDC. Yep, we're filling with buckwheat holes. Hi. <laughs> I think they're also going to go on um, the rocket bench. Yeah. So it's right now it's just stone, so this will uh, be a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> it's our first day at Wheaton Labs, and one thing we can tell already is that people like to stay busy. So right now I'm in um, Paul's home, and uh, I have behind me a project. Uh, they're working on filling pillows with natural materials. And of course, Stella is a crafty little girl, so she found her way to the project. <laughs> this is Cheryl. Hi. Cheryl's the stitcher here. Looks like she's got some sewing machine skills. Yeah, so does Clara. We'll switch off. <laughs>
I think I must be in the kitchen because something smells delicious. Here behind me, I've got Stuart. Let me introduce. Hi, Stuart. Hi, how are you? Are you cooking for us? Yes, I'll be doing some of the cooking at the uh, PDC. Which makes you the most important person here. <laughs> well, I couldn't say that, but it's like without the participants, there wouldn't be a PDC. Well, there's that. <laughs> and the teachers. Everybody's important. So what kinds of foods are you cooking for us? Uh, there'll be a lot of vegan dishes. Uh, there'll be um, incorporating a lot of ancient grains, as well as just regular grains and beans, um, some brown rice dishes. Whatever I can make uh, can be anything from um, simple uh, pasta dishes to more complicated things like uh, stuffed, um, stuffed root vegetables like stuffed yams and uh, different flavors. Like right now I just made a batch of um, ginger carrot miso tamari dressing. Mm, okay, delicious. so it has a little bit of an Asian flavor to it. Uh -huh. And then your standard salad dressing. So this would be the uh, uh, lemon garlic dill. Uh -huh. yeah. It's fun to walk around the night before the PDC start. We're all really looking forward to see what happens tomorrow. So tomorrow morning I wake up uh, early in the morning, I come down for the group breakfast, and uh, then I go to class. It's been a long time since I've sat in class, but I am looking forward to sitting down and having people tell me stuff that I didn't know before. Um, that's kind of why I'm here. And I will figure out how I can share the most important points with you. We'll see you there.